buddy, Carl Shu from Snorkel.tv. Welcome back. Um, what we're going to be talking about today is how to use Tween Max to tween multiple movie clips all at once with a little bit of a stagger and use only one line of code. And uh, here's the example I will be building. Let's just uh, close Safari. And if you need a little refresher on Tween Max, please check out my overview on Snorkel.tv. And let's check out um, what we had built last time. Here we just have um, three movie clips being tweened very slowly. Um, and it runs well. But the only issue with this, you know, we were learning this step by step, is that for each movie clip, we have an individual line of code that's pretty much virtually similar, except that um, we've changed around um, you know, maybe one property, which is actually, excuse me, um, the name of the movie clip. If I want to make this much quicker, I can change all of these values to one second instead of four, and uh, we'll see that this is going to make it run much quicker. But the problem here is that I still had to change something in three different places. So as easy as copying and pasting is, and as easy as it is to just change one number a few times, it becomes a pain in the neck if you're doing it 10 times or 50 times. So what we're going to do is jump over to this file that has some newly fangled movie clips in here. Same instance names. We have new game MC, options MC, and also take a guess, credits MC. Good job, guys. And I'm going to tell all of them to follow the same animation parameters and stagger their animation. Let's go to my actions layer. And here in frame one, I already have the import statements in there, which makes all the tween max goodness available to this file. And in order to tell multiple movie clips what they should do using tween max, we're going to create an array, which is simply a list of all the movie clips. So we're going to call this MC's array. All right. And if you need help on the basics of arrays, please visit my site. I'll have a link to some good resources for you. Um, we're just going to create a new array, use the new constructor, and I'm just going to type out the names of my clips. We had um, new game MC, we had options MC, and credits MC. I believe in that order. Yes. Okay. And so now I have this list of all the movie clips that I'm going to be talking to. And I'm now going to tell tween max to do an all from. So all from means all movie clips will tween from a particular point to wherever they happen to be on the stage in frame number one. And we're going to just start off by saying, you know what, we need to tell them to tween max to look inside of MC's array. And our animation will be one second. And inside of these curly brackets, we're going to specify what properties we're going to be tweening from. And, and their values. So let's say the alpha is going to be zero. We'll start off really simple. Let me just close this paren, semicolon. And now, when we test this out, you'll see that all three clips fade in. But it's all happening at once. I would like to have a little bit of delay or stagger. So what we can do is after the curly brackets that hold all the properties that are gonna be changed, I'm gonna add a comma. I'm gonna add another parameter and this is the stagger amount, and I'm going to say one second. That's how much time will be between each movie clip fading in. All right, so now you see there's a one second delay. Pretty cool. Now, what we can do is make this a little bit fancier, all right? Um, we probably don't want to wait that long, A, so we'll speed that up. And let's also change the scale x property will start at zero, and this whoops, the scale y will start at zero as well. And inside of these curly brackets, remember, we can put a comma separated list of all the properties we want to change. And again, these are the values that we are starting at, because it's an all from. All right, test it out. Aha, pretty nice, right? Each movie clip scales in and uh, looks good. Well, we can also add a little bit of a, an ease to this. All right, so 
easing is going to make it look better. Let's just say ease is going to be a back dot ease out. Now when you do a back ease, it means it goes past its target value and then goes back to where it should actually be. So these are going to get bigger than they are on stage and then go back to being 100%. So now you have this sort of bubbly action. All right. Pretty cool. Just by adding an additional parameter, we get this nice new effect. All right, so let's look at our script. Um, maybe we want these things to move up from a certain position. I can say, hey, you know what? Your Y value is going to start at 400, so that's going to be very low. Um, actually, if I do 420, that's going to be off stage. So then everything just flies in from the bottom. All right, well, maybe I don't want things to move that far. Well, I know that my stage has a height of 360, so let's go ahead and give this also a um, Y of 180. So now everything is going to be flying out from the middle of the stage. All right, so that actually looks pretty cool. Now, we can, if, as you saw in my little intro, the animation just kept going and going and going. Well, I'll show you some more parameters we can add. Inside of these curly brackets here, I can also tack on here a repeat value. If I say repeat two, the animation will play once and then twice. All right, now that looked a little bit funky. Let's start it again. So it plays once and then it plays twice the second time. It looks a little bit off. Well, let's add this. Let's say yo-yo. Yo-yo means literally go back and forth, like a yo-yo would go up and down. If I say yo-yo true, see how everything comes in and then goes out? Well, for my repeat value, I can also say, let's make this negative one. And that means it's going to loop indefinitely. All right, just keeps going and going and going. And now, again, all these values, once you have them in there, we can tweak them. Let's say 0.2, and let's make my animation 0.5 seconds. And now it's going to be just totally freaking out. But again, we have the ability to make these sorts of changes. Let's go ahead and get rid of the yo-yoing. All right, because it can be a little annoying after a while. Um, and... Let's just go ahead and say, all right, we have this all set up. There's that one line of code that does all the work for all the movie clips. And maybe we want to add a new option. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to take load game. Let's go to my GUI layer. Take out load game. All right. And let's just place it on the stage pretty much where it should go. Let's give it an instance name of load game MC. And now that it's on the stage, all I have to do is add it to my array, load game MC, spell it right, Carl, and then test the movie out. And there it is. It animates using the same parameters as all the others. And I didn't have to add a new layer to the timeline, add a tween, and mess with a bunch of properties. It all worked. Now the spacing might be a little off. That stuff is all fixable. What's great about this is that I can eventually say, you know what, I want my whole nav to be, you know, maybe over here to the left a little bit. All right, still works. I didn't have to go onto the timeline, select multiple frames, or do any of that nonsense. And if we check this out in a browser, you're going to see really how well this can run. And again, this is Safari. Look at that. It's like butter. Just do a refresh. That has a lot of pop, a lot of punch. It looks awesome. All right, guys, check us out on snorkel.tv and uh, leave some comments. Love to hear from you. Bye-bye.